Well, good afternoon. Um, it's good to be back. We uh, are excited to get back in, into playing mode. Had the guys back yesterday. Um, had more than a typical Monday workout, and uh, we'll go in pads today again. And uh, excited about the challenge. It's going to be a great challenge uh, on Saturday against a great uh, Oklahoma State team in a tough environment. But um, uh, we'll uh, put together game plans and, and keep ironing things out and uh, hope the guys uh, uh, play really well. So I'm, I know they're excited about the, the opportunity. So we'll open it up for questions. You said more than on your Monday practice. How? how well, how we usually we're just in t-shirts and shorts on, on Monday coming off of a game on Saturday. Uh, but with us not playing on Saturday, we put pads on yesterday and had uh, uh, much more in-depth practice just because we'd been off a couple of days. Your first Big 12 season, how geared up are you? How geared up is the team for this opportunity? Well, I, I know that uh, they're excited about it. Um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a, a tough venue going on the road, but I, I think um, we need, once again, another measuring stick for us to see where we are. Uh, I, I'm excited just like the guys are just to have another opportunity. You know, you only have so many opportunities and we're just excited to play. How different is uh, Oklahoma State on offense than the three opponents that you guys have faced? Oh, quite a bit different um, because they can beat you in, in all phases. You know, they're going to beat you just running the football. Uh, with a dynamic running back and, and an exceptional offensive line, and they're going to uh, throw the ball. Uh, I know Wallace is a tremendous, tremendous player, and they have other um, pieces around him that are really exceptional as well. And then you throw in the, the quarterback that is so explosive and, and can hit a home run on every play. So, I mean, in all three phases of, of offensive football with the ability for, for the quarterback to run and throw uh, wide receivers uh, to beat you in the running back, it's a, it's a formidable offense. And I'm, I'm just curious, at North Dakota State, how often did you face this kind of spread? You see it quite a bit. I mean, it's, it's what college football is becoming. So you see it uh, all the time with, with tempo, you know, trying to get plays off as quickly as you can. I mean, that's everybody in college football is doing that or everybody – in in different leagues, you know, there's a handful of teams, and, and so we faced it quite often. How important was it to have that off week right before getting into Big 12, maybe a chance to kind of gather your thoughts and get the team feedback on it? Yeah, it was good for us from a staff's point of view to just evaluate where we are, what we feel we can do with the group of guys we have, where do, where do we see our strengths, where do we see our weaknesses. Um, try to work on all those weaknesses, emphasize the strengths, try to see, um, you know, where we're thin at positionally. Um, and, uh, you know, just each day, we're, you know, we're, once again, I know we're only, this is going to be game four, but we're still pretty new with, with our program. Uh, and so every opportunity we have, we had a good week of practice last week. We practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, so we were able to get a lot of work done as much on Oklahoma State as we were doing, working on ourselves and going against each other quite a bit just to continue to refine where we're at offensively and defensively. Self-evaluation has always been part of coaching, but now at this level, everyone has analysts. Yep. Offenses against special teams. Does that make this process easier where you have someone really dedicated to breaking down your own film? Yeah, I think it'll come into play as we continue to move forward. You know, it, it's we have all that stuff. Okay, now how much are you going to take of Bowling Green? How much are you taking of, of Nichols, you know? So um, although we took it all into account, you still have to separate some of that, some parts of that game. And so moving forward, it's going to be a big piece for us. I know there have been some guys that have played multiple spots already this year in the bye week, a chance to experiment with some of that a little bit more. Yeah, we always do that in places I've been. You know, we had maybe 15 guys just doing a different individual um, uh, from a position, not change. We didn't change any people, but just position switch just to, for an individual period to get some more eyes on guys. The other thing that I think it did and what we wanted to do was try to get some running backs and receivers into more tackling situations. You know, take a, a, a Tyler Burns or a Jordan Brown or a Harry Trotter or a Youngblood or somebody like that that's uh, Landry that's a, a good special teams player that doesn't get an opportunity to get into a tackling circuit or to do some of those things that's a chance for us to emphasize that. Also I wonder just how, how different is Chuba Hubbard or similar is he to Kylan Hill in this regard? 
Uh, he, in my opinion, he's he's faster without question, um, and it's a different offensive scheme, um, and uh, he's exceptional as far as um, you know. Once he once he gets north and south, he's tough to catch, and and he hits the hole so ex so well. And then yeah, if you give him the edge, and he had the edge a few times against Texas, he can outrun everybody. And he's a physical back too. Uh, he runs through arm tackles and. Uh, very, very impressed with him, but you know, both backs were, you know, Hill's obviously a great player as well. You guys have been in the Big 12 season as one of the three undefeated teams in the league still, and <coughs> ranked in the Associated Press poll this week. I mean, what, what do you see in these guys? Seeing our guys are, yeah, or guys? oh, we're just continuing to grow and try to get, and getting better every day. I don't pay attention to if we're ranked or not ranked or what. I pay attention, obviously, to our record because that's, that's what you're judged by. Um, but we're a long ways away from being a finished product. We have to continue to improve over the next two months because um, I know as you get into Big 12 play, if you don't have your A game every Saturday, you're going to get beat. There's just no, no bones about it. Home, away, it doesn't matter. You, you better come prepared with a great preparation throughout the week to give yourself an opportunity to be successful. And what's Daniel Green meant to this defense early? Daniel Green? Yeah. He's, been, he's, he's getting better. Uh, he's playing more. Um, and I think each time he gets on the field, he's gaining more confidence. It gives us, uh, you know, a, a third linebacker right now that we can rotate to, and rotate often, uh, especially with the games, you know, like two weeks ago when it was so hot, and uh, this week it'll probably be warm again, even though it's an evening game. So he'll play an awful lot for us. Uh, going back to Chuba Hubbard, uh, what are you guys doing, or who are you using to kind of prepare your defense for a like that? Well, we have. All of our, it's hard to replicate him, but, you know, whether it's, um, you know, C.J. Price or uh, Jacardier, we're using all those guys. I mean, that, that's the hard thing is you have to practice some tempo where you're going quickly, and so everybody has to play running back that's a running back. You're, you're, you're in for a play, and then you're quickly lining up and running a play again, so you can't just focus on one guy uh, from a scout team standpoint or you won't get enough plays off. Time of possession is a byproduct of productive offense and not necessarily something you concentrate on. Mm -hmm. But how important is it in, in a game such as against Oklahoma State? Yeah, it's really important for us when you have a team that wants to get you know between 90 and 100 plays. And uh, if we're not able to, to move, the fall, move the ball and, and move the chains and have some, some effective drives, and take some clock up, then we're going to be out there all day on defense, and we can't afford to do that. Um, we, we need to try to keep the play, play count down, and that's uh, obviously some of the offense that we can do, and then us getting off the field when we have the opportunities on third down, but uh, uh, something that we're talking about as a staff without question. I'm sure you don't go into a season with preconceived notions on number of carries and that kind of stuff, but through three games, I think James Gilbert has one less carry than Jordan Brown and Harry Trotter combined. Would you have maybe expected James to get that much of the load if he just earned it, or is it too early in the season? Too early in the season. Once again, those first two weeks, um, you could say some of our freshmen had a lot of carries, which moving forward they probably won't get as many as the veteran guys. So let's see how the Big 12 plays out. We need all those guys without question. All of them are quality backs, and um, the, the older guys are obviously going to get the lion's share of those reps now just because you know it's, it's their time and they're experienced. No, I think from a personnel standpoint, um, it probably is very advantageous. You know, all the calls are different. So, you know, some of the line stunts and line things you talk about at the, at the line of scrimmage, uh, all that's changed. So um, that's, that's not anything to, that we can concern ourselves with. But obviously personnel, he knows, he knows the strengths and weaknesses of all our guys, you bet. You know, a, a call or a term doesn't give you great advantage if you can't beat the guy in front of you. Uh, and obviously, people change things, and, and it's a different system that they're in that he's going to now. So, no, it, it still comes down to who the better player is, uh, you know, that you're going across from. And, and so that's still going to come down to who's, who's best in the trenches.
taking the advantage from return to a familiar environment like that? Yeah, well, I hope so. Um, and, uh, you know, it gives you confidence going in that you can have success at a place if you've been there before to be successful, but you still have to, you still have to execute. You know, he still has to have a tremendous week of preparation because obviously it's a different offense and it's a different style of defense, so to speak. And so we, we've got to continue to prepare on a daily basis. And, you know, we had a good practice yesterday. Today's going to be critical for us to make sure that we keep, you know, moving forward in the game plans. Mm -hmm. Is that still, I know you're new, but is that still a place you guys value? You, you bet. Thomas Grayson we took there uh, this year, um, and it's not far, and Jay Ray uh, is from the area, and so um, Coach Ray has done a nice job, and we'll continue, you know, to find guys uh, in, in, the, in that region, but uh, it, uh, it's Big 12 country, and so you want to try to make sure and um, give yourself a chance to recruit some of those guys. No, our focus has been good since we got here. You know, that's the thing. I don't want a roller coaster. I want our guys to have great focus, and they've had tremendous focus from the spring or winter to spring to summer to fall. And, you know, um, that's, that's what we're striving for is to have guys prepared to practice every day, prepared for meetings every day, prepared for walkthrough, uh, prepared to, to, to make sure that they're understanding the game plans and watching film. And, and that's, I think, um, a credit again to our older guys and our leadership that uh, they challenge everybody to be great every day. Are White, Hubert, and Walter Neal on practice list? Yes, they both are. They both have practiced the last three practices. They'll be ready to go. And then Cody Fletcher? I would say Cody's out this week. What has impressed you most about the running game right now? Uh, the fact that we've been able to do it out of a variety of formations. We've been able to do it um, under center. We've been able to do it out of, out of gun. It's been some quarterback run. We haven't done much quarterback run. We haven't needed to a ton, um, but we've gotten the jet game going with our receivers. Um, we've used you know, multiple backs, um, multiple tight ends. That's the thing that uh, for us to be successful, uh, we have to be able to uh, make it difficult to prepare for, for our offense simply because you're not lining. Everybody says we run power. Yeah, we do, but we have a lot of different schemes off of that. And the more, the more our guys get comfortable with all those different schemes, the better we're going to be. And there's some schemes that we're not running very well that we tried to emphasize last week so that we can have you know, more diversity in our run game. It, you know, I, control what you can control is what I would say. Um, and so, you know, that's it's going to even out or close to even out in the Big 12. Obviously, it doesn't totally even out, but uh, um, that, that, is, that is what it is. You're on the road and, and uh, you, have to, you have to be able to prepare and play well on the road. And, you know, that the, once again, it's another great challenge for us to be able to try to see if we can continue to improve, continue to to get better in all three phases. That's what, that's what our goal is this week. On the flip side of that, first of all, it's not that we have <laughs> a lot of time to get a recap, but uh, on the flip side of that, this is a year where you have five Big 12 home games yep. out of the nine. So now you're looking at five out of eight in Manhattan for another stretch. That even maybe add some more importance to this game because how you're going to be coming home quite a bit. You know, if you look that far ahead, you're going to get beat period. And so we're not focusing on whatever's after this game. This is our only focus. And just like, um, you know, Nichols and Bowling Green and people like, aren't you excited about playing Mississippi State? No, we're excited about attacking Bowling Green and continuing to improve. And, and you know, it's easy to say we have 12 one-week seasons, but that's the way you have to approach it. And, and the opportunities, nobody's guaranteed uh, a game after this one. Somebody could get hurt and stuff. So you, you try to, you know, put your best foot forward every Saturday. You anticipating this environment, this road environment being tougher than what you saw at Mississippi State? Yeah, I, I, mainly because they're closer. Um, you know, they're right on top of you. And, and I've been down there once, but the, the guys have, have told me 
uh, as well about you know, how tight it is. The sidelines obviously are really tight and uh, and it'll be exceptionally loud just because it is their Big 12 home opener as well. And so, you know, we worked the noise last week. We worked it yesterday. We'll work it again uh, today and, and uh, um, hope that we have enough different uh, variety of snap counts and stuff that uh, we're able to execute. Did you cross paths much with Mike Gundy? Just just at no, uh, just at the last couple, at the last Big 12 meeting, uh, I, I sat with him and spent a little time with him and, and bounced some ideas off of him. And I was really appreciative appreciative of him, of, him uh, of of willing to sit and visit with me and answer my questions. And uh, so much respect for him um, because he's a ball coach and he didn't care that I was a rival. I was a, another coach, and he just hey, I'll help you out ever, however I can. And and uh, that meant a ton to me. On that same note, he's been somebody with a history of hiring kind of non-traditional coordinators from different places and really falls into that football school yep. mentality. Did he talk about that with you at all? No, but the first thing he said to me was I, I, how cool it was, what a run you guys had at North Dakota State. What you guys did was, there was remarkable. He appreciated and knew of what the past was, where, where we came from, and uh, appreciated good football and said, shoot, that was fun to watch you guys. You guys had one heck of a run. Well, A, you have to know where he's aligned. You know, is he going to be outside? Is he going to be in the slot? Is he going to be on a single receiver side? Is he going to be part of a three-man bunch, two-man? You, you, we're going to try to identify where he's at um, because he's a big-time playmaker. And then just like everybody else is probably done and going to continue to do to him. You hope you don't get exposed when you got to play man coverage because you have to play some single coverage on him, whether it's single man or single zone. You're gonna you're gonna get over the top of him a couple times. You're gonna try to jam him up somebody over the top. You're gonna do all sorts of different things, um, so you keep showing different pictures. But the first and most important thing is to recognize where he's aligned all the time, which is difficult when you're going that fast. And with Sanders, does his athleticism and his playmaking ability outweigh his usefulness? Oh yeah, oh he, he yeah. He doesn't look like a, a freshman out there. Um, tremendous speed, um, really tough. He got hit a number of times last week, and he kept bouncing up, bouncing back. Didn't get rattled when he when he threw uh, an interception. Um, competitor, I, you know. Just love the way the guy competes and and plays so hard all the time. And he's a uh, a fun guy to watch on television. I'll, I'll let you know how how fun he is when when it's live. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really different. We're always going to, like yesterday, we did some ones versus ones. We're always going to do that during the week at some point, uh, just because I think it's really important to get the speed of the game, not only at wide out in skill positions, but up front as well. Uh, but, you know, we have some unique ways to work on Temple that um, um, we'll keep it to ourselves, but we have a lot of unique ways to work on the Temple to try to get multiple plays off. Uh, in a in a realistic look, not something that's not realistic. It's really pretty good football, uh, and our scout team and our, our grad assistants that run our scout team do a phenomenal job. Um, and we were able to work a little bit of that last week, which I think helped, to your point, get the kinks out of coming out of a huddle. And yesterday, I thought our recall was really, really good uh, with the scout team guys of playing fast, and we need to do that for the next three days. Um, they're doing a lot of different things, very multi multiple. Um, they're going to be in a three-down look. They can get to a four-down look. They're going to play some some cover two with, with squat corners. They're going to play some man coverage. They're going to pressure you out of their three-down stuff. Um, you know, they were pretty unique against, uh, you know, against Texas, um, which it's kind of difficult because we're a different offense than Texas. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they do try to defend all the things that we do. But uh, extremely talented group of guys. Um, 
really been impressed with the corners in general. Uh, both are physical guys that uh, run well and cover extremely well. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll have our hands full trying to find different ways to be able to try to mani manipulate some drives so we can keep the ball. Um, he's, it's, it's not surprising to me because he's a competitor, uh, but how smart he is, how, how the game comes to him. And when I say that as a defensive tackle, you think, well, how hard can it be? Well, we just changed everything on a, on a young man from spring to fall with every new different terminology, every different technique, everything different. And he's grasped everything exceptionally well. Uh, he's playing at a really high level. And the thing that's fun to see is how confident he's playing. And when you're playing with confidence, you're making more plays. And, and um, he's going to make Trey Deshaun that much better. Because right now, you, know, you look at people that are doubling Trey and Mitty's making a ton of plays. Well, that, that's going to have to even out. And because uh, Jordan's just been an unbelievable playmaker for th through three weeks. This may get into some of the stuff you don't want to share about secrets. But yep. you talk about the double rep system some. How do you divvy up the responsibilities and who coaches the running back on their side if Brian Anderson's on the A side, for lack of a better term? Like, how does that oh, work out? Well, we're not doing that now, but during fall camp, um, you know, it would be a grad assistant there or Coach Mess would handle them. Maybe they'd be on opposite fields. A great example would be Coach Malone and Coach Klanderman. One's coaching corners, one's at safeties. They're always on separate ends so they could coach all four. And then obviously that's what you – you know, you, you film all of it, and then you sit and watch all of it. You, you're watching a lot more tape, but in the same respect, even though that's not full speed tempo, I know that if we had a 40-play set, uh, Denzel Goolsby's getting 33 or 34 of those plays. That's the conditioning. You're getting 34 plays out of 40 plays, and it's it's pretty good pace. Um, that's the conditioning part. Great, thanks guys.